we had the honor of hanging out with J James Ward from Dungeons & Dragons fame. D he wrote D&Ts and Demigods. He is a huge con uh, contributor of Gamma World and of course created Metamorphosis Alpha, adventuring in the sci-fi world. Tales from the Outer Rim. I'm here with Jim Ward. Yes. Great to see you. Thank you. Nice thank to be you. seen. And thank you for playing some games with us. Uh, you managed to kill all our party. Uh, wrong. Oh. What do I say? What do you say? I say Jim Ward doesn't kill player characters. Players kill, kill player player characters. characters. Of course. That's. I didn't that kill anybody. No. They, but they you, all did die three times. That's right. You <laughs> en you enabled us. <laughs> yes. There we go. You enabled. I'm enabler. You're you're an you're, That's funny. You're, it's a death enabler. I'll have to use that. That could be a that could be a monster. It'd be a great creature. Yes. yes a death, death enabler. enabler. That's right. <laughs> I love you tell it. us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Sure. Um, um, born in 1951, so I'm very old. Um, grew up, my dad loved games, I loved games. My dad taught me how to play poker so he could win my allowances from me. Oh, that's perfect. That's Met nice. Gary Gygax in 74, and he taught me how to play Dungeons and Dragons. I was hooked. Um, started playing. I suggested to Gary that we do a science fiction version, and he let me do it. I did Metamorphosis Alpha, and that came out in 1976. And I've been gaming ever since. I have lots of gaming products to my credit. I um, just finished making these two products, as a matter of fact. Perfect. Um, Earth Prime and uh, Dragon Scales. Um, they both use a deck of cards instead of dice to randomize the effect. And so a re just a regular, well, regular I mean, deck of cards. This is a very big regular deck <laughs> This is the referee's deck, deck which, which <laughs> is just great fun right. to do, but otherwise everybody gets their own regular deck of cards. So when someone, someone passes, out of their own accord, of course, when someone passes away, <laughs> yes. uh, when you have to hold up a card that says they pass away, do you like kind of, because you've got a, such a grand deck, do, uh -huh, you, uh -huh. do you show them and, and say wah, 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 Yeah, of course like I show them and yes, tell yes. them exactly how it happened. Oh, perfect. And they're very sad for a while and, and then we start <laughs> up another game. Yeah, we start up another game. <laughs> yes, awesome. exactly right. Awesome, awesome, sorry about that. That's all right. Um, can you tell us uh, uh, why are you still interested in uh, role playing? Oh, I love gaming and I love game design and so I, I keep getting requests from companies that they, they want their own role-playing game. Okay. Um, in fact, I'm just working with a new company um, on a game called Giant Lands, mm -hmm. and they're going to turn that role-playing game into a theme park. Oh, wow. So I'm gigantically excited about gigantically that. Gigantically excited. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> uh, it's going to be in Madison, so it's just a stone's throw away. Oh, re oh really? Yeah. That's really interesting. It's, it's just So terrific. it's going to be like a fantasy-based theme park? It's of apocalyptic thing? fantasy. Uh -huh. No one has ever combined the apocalyptic style theme universe right. with a fantasy universe. Uh -huh. So this brings That's two so smart. genres together that have never been together before. How smart is that? It's just brilliant, yes. And you're basing, you're doing the core rule set on I'm that. doing the core rule set. I just finished a, an adventure called Squirrel Tower. And we had a great playtest just two weeks ago where all the players were turned into nine foot tall squirrels. Oh, well, that's, that's quite amusing, that's actually. It sounds, it sounds like one of your games. Actually. <laughs> After playing uh, the Gamma, Gamma World, World yesterday, yesterday. Yes, you did was, a very good job, too, you, by the way. Thank you. It was, it was, it was very fun. Uh, lots of worshipping and, 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 <laughs> and, and, and Brutor uh, course, stealing. He stole that's, a horse. That's yes. right. Well, we liberated the horse more than, <laughs> more than stealing it. Really. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, on this tour, we got a whole bunch of people coming from all around the world. Uh, why do you think they might want to be here to play uh, Dungeons and Dragons and other? Well, they're gamers, movies? you know. The, the, the TSR managed to set up a system that everybody in the world is playing the same game system. So the Australians have come here to play, and they know exactly what the rules are and how to play, along with the New York guys and the California guys. So the nice part about this D and D A D and D role playing is everybody knows how to do it. Right. So there's no there's no uh, uptime learn time because they've learned already. Right. 
Yeah. It's so that's why I think, that, and plus this Lake Geneva is the birthplace of role playing. I, I just, I'm really hoping that we get a Lake Geneva um, role playing museum. Yeah, that would be beautiful. That would be, that, that would be just so fitting, really. Yeah, I think it's really called for yeah. us, for sure. Did you go down to the the lake and see the, the Gary Gagas stone We did, and we rolled yeah. our dice on it. Oh, that's there. great, yes. I got, a, I got a blessing. One of my dice has actually been doing very well since then. Uh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so. so Gary was a, a real big gamer, and he had lots of fun gaming, and, and he taught me, and I, I, I just consider him my mentor. He taught me everything I know. Right. And uh, so I've been putting together game systems now for 45 years. Wow. Long time. Yeah. It's just, uh, really, you're a spring chicken yet, though. <laughs> 68, I don't know about <laughs> that. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite story you like to talk about, uh, tell for about the old days? Oh, I have the Gary introduction story. That's my okay. favorite story of all time. Can you tell us? You bet, I love to. Time's 1974. I just graduated from college with an education degree. And every Tuesday, I would come to Lake Geneva from Elkhorn. Elkhorn's eight miles away. That's where I lived. Every Tuesday, I would come here and go to the bookstore and collect fantasy and science fiction books because that's when they got it in. So one Tuesday, I was there and I was collecting, you know, I was collecting Fafford the Gray Mouser books and I was collecting uh, Conan books, just a bunch of different books. And I had seven books in my hand. And I, I, I looked over to the side and this very strange biker dude was also collecting books. And he had this blue jean jacket on and he was all bearded and he had some, uh, some dirty jeans on and, a, and boots. He, he just looked like a biker to me. But when he got done, we both had the exact seven books in our hand. Oh, awesome. <laughs> we found it hilarious. And, awesome. and, and we both talked a little bit about reading and how much we really liked Conan. And he said he had a game where I could play Conan the Barbarian and fight Set. Wow. And I said, really? <laughs> <laughs> he hooked me like That's a fish, sure. <laughs> reeling me in. Uh, a couple weeks later, I, I, was, I was on his porch where you guys are playing games right now. Right. And, uh, and he taught me how to play D&D. And I played a wizard. I've been playing wizards ever since. I love wizards a lot. Right. But uh, that's how I met Gary Gygax. That's awesome. It's, it, it is a fun little yeah, story to tell. Is, yeah. uh, serendipity. Yes, right? exactly. Serendipitous. Exactly. Very ser serendipitous. Um, do you have a favorite adventure that you've played or uh, have DM'd? A little, little adventure that you've hmm. really Well, you know, I, I wrote Gamma World, and Gamma World is uh, apocalyptic. In other words, we, we blast the world with, with nuclear weapons and, and alien bacteria, and, and basically the world is ruined, and you play in that ruin and try to survive. Right. So one of my favorite scenarios is the, the coming to adulthood scenario. You're in a tribe, you're, you grew up in the tribe in a forest, and you have to go for the test of adulthood. And so they give you a bone spear, and they give you a, a turtle shield, and you have to go out and you have to bring back a piece of technology. That's all you have to do. But you can't come back to the village until you get one. Those who try to come back without technology get killed by their parents. parents. Uh, I particularly like it that it's their parents that kill them. <laughs> Every day, yeah. I think that's exceptional. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. So yeah. I, and I, I, I bet I played that I bet I played that scenario ninety times. <laughs> so. It's just because you're you're going out into a world that's very rough, you're gonna fight robots, you're gonna fight mutants and aliens, and all you have is a spear and a bone shield. That's right. And horses. Well, sometimes you have horses. <laughs> <laughs> Brute horse is actually horses, sorry. twice the size of a horse. Right. And, and six legs, right? And six legs. Yeah, that's yeah. why it's worshipable. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> uh, if you could be in any of your universes, oh. uh, uh, what would you be and what character would you play? Oh, there we go. First of all, I really love wizards. Dragon Scales is, is a fantasy rule set where you use a deck of cards. Right. And the wizards here are pretty high powerful, but they have to have dragon scales to cast their spells. Oh, so you just can't sit back and take it easy. You actually have to go find and kill dragons right. to get your magic to work, nice. which I think is a, is a nice little right. gaming feature. Right. And, uh, and I would definitely go in dragon that's, scales that's and become a wizard there. 
What type of, uh, is it de dependent on what type of dragon to you? The, the Very good question. See? Each dragon. I'm, I'm a gamer. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Each dragon gives a different strength. Green dragons are the weakest. Purple dragons are the strongest. And so any scales that you get are, are, are important according to their color. Right. And so everybody wants purple scales. And, and you can actually buy them in the city. Um, and buy purple scales, but they cost a ton. But uh, green scales are really easy to get, and everybody gets them. I see that you're wearing purple today. <laughs> I'm wearing a, the. Is, is that intentional? Uh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> this is an Elkhorn Elks shirt oh, from Elkhorn. Okay. I thought it had and something to do with the dragon scales. Well, no, uh, that's a good see, question. See? But no, it's long sleeve Leaves because it's cold cool. out there. <laughs> yes. Awesome. All right, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Really, for, I'm happy that you invited me into this oh, big soiree. It's, it's, I recommend it to anybody who wants to have some fun gaming. Cool. Thank you very much. And it was awesome to have you uh, DM, and I was exceptionally happy to, to uh, game with you. Oh, it was, thank you. Uh, it was a pleasure, and I've laughed, we laughed hard all the way through. We did laugh all the time. That's that good. That's game. what's supposed to happen. That's right. Thank you very much. Sir. All right. Thanks for your time, James. Hopefully, everybody in, enjoyed it. Please subscribe, comment below, share, and fill up your life. And now, but I'll be careful. You've learned from I, me. I, you, <laughs> my rule on the table is, if you say it, it happens. Right, so, okay. All right. Something that kind of tripped you up a couple times. Yes, yes, it's just fun. <laughs> okay, so, okay. Okay, so then, um, since we always go right, should we go east? Yes, we should go east. I think we should. When looking east, what is uh, what is the largest woods? Woods. Oh, woods. Okay. woods. Yeah, wood. There's nothing <laughs> unsafe about a forest. <laughs>